Hello everyone, this will be everything you need to know before the third season of The Witcher. Alright, let's go! The story starts off with Geralt of Rivia who is a witcher. A witcher is basically a mutated monster hunter with the added perks of being able to live longer than humans, being able to use magic, and also being completely hated by humans. Our man Geralt has been doing this for a long time and is one of the few remaining witchers because they've all been wiped out and there's no longer a way to create more witchers. That being said, while traveling and hunting monsters, Geralt meets this bard by the name of Jaskier who wants to change the public image of Geralt, which he does through very catchy songs. Toss a coin to your witcher, oh valley of plenty, whoa. Anyways, after a while, Jaskier asked Geralt for protection at a party. During that party is kind of where the story starts to unravel. You see, this party was hosted by the Queen of Sintra, known as Queen Calanthe, who was hosting this party in order to find a suitor for her daughter, Pavetta. And Pavetta is in love with this guy by the name of Dooney, who's actually a hedgehog. But that's not important. What's important is that during the party, Dooney comes in and claims the Law of Surprise, or Pavetta's hand in marriage. And the way the Law of Surprise works is that, after saving somebody from certain death, you can claim the Law of Surprise, which basically means that you can claim something that they don't yet know that they have, such as money, land, or even a daughter. Which as it turns out, for Dooney, is Pavetta, because he saved the king's life before he realized that he had a daughter. Anyways, Queen Calanthe opposed of this marriage, but Destiny said, not today. <laughs> because apparently the law of surprise is bound by destiny, which also means that if you don't give the person who or what they are owed, a punishment ranging from your end to the world's end is plausible. And in order for Queen Calanthe to prevent the end of her own kingdom, he said yes, to the two getting married. But not before trying to kill Dooney, who the Witcher saved. And since Geralt saved Dooney's life from certain death, Geralt accidentally asked for the law of surprise, which immediately linked Pavetta's unborn child by the name of Ciri to Geralt. Fuck. Queen Calanthe then banishes Geralt from the Kingdom of Sintra in order to make sure that she never has to pay up on the Law of Surprise, even though she just witnessed what Destiny does to people who try to prevent the Law of Surprise. Anyways, the story then picks up with the Hunchback of Notre Dame, I mean, Yennefer, who looks the way she does because she has twisted spine, which is caused because she's part elf, but only a quarter, and that quarter shows. Her story is that her father sold her to this sorceress by the name of Tessaia, and while with Tessaia, she learns all the ins and outs of magic, along with this other sorceress by the name of Fringilla. After their training was over, Yennefer was assigned to Nilfgaard as an advisor, but she didn't want to do that, so they sent Fringilla in her place, and that's because she got her heart broken by her first love, Istrid, who said very mean things about the way she looked. And because of that, she undergoes the most expensive cosmetic surgery in the world. And that's because after the surgery, she is no longer able to have children. But on the bright side, she can now make a slow-mo entrance. After that, she basically becomes a freelance mage who later runs into Geralt, who at the time was using wishes from a djinn in order to cure his insomnia. But Geralt falls for Yennefer and realizes that she's trying to capture the djinn, and assuming that the djinn would kill her, he wishes that he wouldn't lose Yennefer. From then on, him and Yennefer keep running into each other, and would occasionally wrestle naked. Yennefer then thinks that she's falling for Geralt, but after traveling with a dragon disguised as a man, as ridiculous as that sound, that is what happened. Anyways, the dragon reveals to Yennefer, who would do anything to have a baby now, that Geralt made a wish to keep from losing each other, which makes Yennefer question her own feelings towards Geralt because her feelings could all be because of Geralt's wish to get mad at each other in part ways. At the same time, Geralt blows up on Yaskir who's just there to help and loses Yaskir too. Years later, after finding out that Nilfgaard is trying to lay siege to Sintra, Geralt goes to Sintra to protect Ciri, who he's bound to by destiny and she with him because of the law of surprise. When he gets there, Queen Calanthe locks him up, but just as quickly regrets it, because Nilfgaard, with the help of Fringilla, who has been using all types of dark magic and sacrifices, quickly takes over Sintra. So Queen Calanthe tells Ciri to go find Geralt, and then she offs herself. You know, somebody really needed to remind Queen Calanthe that you don't mess with destiny, and that someone could have been a something, like ClickUp. On ClickUp, you can set reminders, make to-do lists, or even work on a shared document with your team. And with just an extra $5 a month, you get unlimited storage and much more. And I know Magic could do a lot of things, but life would have been easier with ClickUp. Link is down below. Anyways, after Queen Calanthe unalived herself, Ciri goes on a long run from the Nilf Guardians, who are led by Kahir and his mage, Fringilla. Now, what Kahir wants with Ciri is to use her magic to bolster his army, because she has an immense amount of magic. That being said, while on the run, Ciri finds this elf by the name of Dara, but after helping Ciri for a while, they have a falling out and go their separate ways. Meanwhile, Yennefer, Tessaia, and a couple other mages fight to prevent Nilfgaard from completely taking over the continent. During that fight, Yennefer basically decimated the whole army by herself and Geralt and Ciri finally find each other. When they do, however, Ciri asks Geralt who is Yennefer, and that's because she had a vision of Geralt looking for Yennefer. The second season picks off at the end of the first season, where Yennefer solo-handedly ended the battle. But just like the Avatar, she vanished. And everyone, including Geralt, believed that she's dead. So Geralt, along with his child surprise, Princess Cirilla, 
aka Siri, go on a long convoluted journey. There's two things that happen by the end of this journey. The first is that Siri and Geralt developed a very nice father and daughter bond. That's so sweet. The second is that the journey took them to the Witcher stronghold up in the mountains. But there, Siri trains to defend herself and become more like Geralt, while all Geralt wants to do is protect Siri. But that's a problem because everybody and their mothers want something from Siri. So here's a short list of the important ones. Vesemir, who's the oldest living witcher that we know of, wants Ciri's blood because she has elder blood. That's because elder blood is a key ingredient to creating more witchers. Yennefer, who everybody thought was dead but is actually alive and is traveling with Frangilla because they got captured by elves. Long story, but I'll get right back to it. She wants Ciri's life because if she unalives Ciri, she gets her powers back. She lost because she used fire magic, which is forbidden. And she believes this because some creature called the Deathless Mother told her. And I'm just gonna refer to her as Baba Yaga because she lives in a hut with legs. Anyways, Baba Yaga wants to be freed, and to be freed, she needs two things. Those two things are people's suffering and Ciri's power. Because Ciri has very powerful magic, and a lot of it. Because just her being scared and screaming shatters monoliths. And these monoliths are kind of like gate keys to another world. Which were presumed to be indestructible, but Ciri can destroy them. And doing so causes new creatures to come into the world. That sounds dangerous. Which brings us back to Yennefer and Frangilla's story. See, these two were captured by elves led by Francesca. Her personality is based off her hate for humans. Everything she does kind of leads right back to that central point. Francesca, Yennefer, and Frangilla sees visions from Baba Yaga. Yennefer is supposed to get Ciri. Frangilla is supposed to gain power in the Nilfgaardian army. And Francesca is supposed to have the first pure-blooded elf baby in a long time. All of these things kind of almost happen, but in a monkey paw wish kind of way. And there's a lot that goes into this, but here's the gist. Yennefer, in order to redeem herself to the Court of Mages, is supposed to kill a general of the Nilfgaardian army by the name of Kahir. At the last minute, she frees Kahir and runs away, because she realizes that almost none of those mages can be trusted. They're all either working for some dark, mysterious figure, or they're just... the worst. Anyways, Kahir makes his way back to the Nilfgaardian army, where Frangilla and Francesca have become best friends and are leading the Nilfgaardian army. Frangilla has a lot of power in the kingdom, just like she hoped for, and Francesca gave birth to her baby. But now here comes the twist. Jilla was relying on the elf soldiers that are coming in from Francesca. But after Francesca has her baby, she no longer sees the need to fight in a war that has nothing to do with the elves. And to get her motivated again, they made her baby into past tense. But nobody knows who ordered the assassination. Obviously upset, Francesca goes off and unalives a bunch of human babies. Well, damn! At the same time, almost every single human kingdom, along with those mages, yeah, the crooked ones, wants Ciri dead. And the elves want to use Ciri to start the apocalypse, so they can wipe out all the humans. There's also this dirty looking fire mage that's after Ciri, but nobody knows who hired him. You still with me? Good, because here's where the story converges. You see, Baba Yaga, after feeding on enough suffering, escapes and possesses Ciri. That's when Geralt, Yennefer, a bunch of other witchers, and even Yaskir, and together and try to stop the Deathless Mother, aka Baba Yaga, in Ciri's body. After a long battle, Yennefer sacrifices herself by pulling Baba Yaga into her body, but Ciri was able to save them by teleporting them all into... Mad Max? Anyway, Ciri teleports them to what looks like another dimension where the Deathless Mother gains her body, and joins what is called the Wild Hunt is supposed to be the apocalypse. They also try to get Ciri onto their side, but she teleports everybody out of there before they can reach them. The season then ends with everybody recovering from the battle, and is revealed that the person who hired the dirty looking fire mage, and the person who ordered the assassination of Francesca's baby, the god emperor himself, the White Flame, who is also Ciri's father. And yeah, I hope I answered all of your questions, but if I didn't, be sure to leave a comment, I read them all. And if you liked that video and want to see more like it, leave a like and subscribe, I really appreciate it.